this is a short video about uh, broken solar panels. It's about so uh, broken solar panels. We donated a couple of broken panels recently um, for experiments, and uh, apart from the visuals, you really need to get to grips with. Uh, how the panels are performing and to that extent you actually need to put an amp meter across each of the individual strings of cells so to get a almost a short circuit current so you measure the amps when you short circuit the uh, the series of cells and that tells you how well they perform on this panel here, uh, going from your right, there's a row going down and a row going up next to each other. That pair of rows makes up one string of cells. There's a connection in the box, either end of that string. And then the same with the next pair in the middle and the same with the next pair at the, at the left hand side. So effectively, when we start measuring, we're measuring across a pair of columns of uh, cells. You can split this up, so if, if for instance, I can see, or I think we can all see there's some damage to the left-hand set of cells. Let's see if we can zoom in. And there's also damage to the bottom there as well. So, if perchance the other two sets of rows of cells work, apart from that one, we can use two thirds of the cell and cut out the damaged part. That's what this is about, this video is about, to identify which bits you can use. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by testing this one and this one the damage is on this side here. There doesn't seem to be too much on the rest of the panel but it's all down this side. And I'll just show you the connecting box in the back. That's the output and it's connected directly to there and that is the connection to the far side of the first pair of rows of panels that's the return from it but it's also the connection to the middle row of panels that's the return from the middle row of panels and also the connection to the far side pair of panels and that's the return so what we'll do is we'll measure between there and there, there and there, and there and there, and see what the current is. And if it's different, i.e. a lot lower on one pair, then we know that we can only use, for instance, that pair, that pair, and that pair, or whichever's the worst. In, that, in this case, the damage is across these two. So it's probably this one that's low, that one and that one. And when I say cut out, what I mean is cut out electrically. So effectively, you could take this wire and connect it to there. So then you've got two rows, two pair of rows that are working. And this one is electrically disconnected. So disconnect rather than cut out. Because cut out really thinks, get the angle grinder to it. No point. We've got an amp meter here. Okay, so there's no point testing for voltage really unless it's really duff. How are we going to do this? Let me see if I can get this amp meter just to stay there. I doubt if it will. Oh well. Let's get a clip. 
So let's put a clip on there. And that shows a bit less than one amp. Short circuit current. Okay. On to the next one before the sun comes out too much. That's two amps. Hopefully you're seeing this. Yeah. That's two amps. So the first one, let's just test it again. Yeah. The first set, which has got the impact just along here, that's not creating enough, so we can only use these two. That one, there's something wrong. So what we can do is we can start taking power from here. From, let's get a pointer. So that is connected to there. So between there and there, there's not sufficient current. So what we need to do is take this cable and attach it to this bit of heat sink. Then there's a diode there, through there, diode there and out. So this will be, this is a nominal maximum power point 30 volt panel. So this will become a 20 volt panel. So we would need three of these. Let's test another one. Right. I'm going to go on to... This is connected directly to there. And then... That's not bad. Let's see if we can get a better connection. And the wire comes off. Connect onto there. Yeah, that's pretty good. Again, slightly better. Just slightly. And again. Ah. The end one's not as good. So what we're doing is we're, we're trying to get the short circuit current. If I can see, there we go, and that's on the load, so that's nearly four amps, but not it four, two amps, but not quite. The sun's not very bright, but it's sufficient to. Uh, and this one is a bit less, so that end one is not as good. little cracks here and when you build when these panels are built they start off with this toughened glass face down then they put an e v a epa sheet it's a plastic sheet uh, that that melts and acts like a glue and then they put the, uh, the all the wafers and then put some more on the back. So when they heat it up, it all glues together. So the moisture can't get to the wafers because there's the EPA sheet in the way. But I think all this white here is going to help, is going to reflect the light. So to that extent, and the glass is quite structural. So if you can put something on that will... Uh, help to glue it together so much the better gloss lacquer excellent retention UV and petrol resistant well I don't think the petrol resistant will make any difference but the surface must be clean dry and dust free so let's give it a go
I'm putting quite a bit just there where the damage is. Hopefully it'll glue it all together. And of course the other problem would be water gets in there and then it freezes. So let's just try and stop the water getting in there. That's why I put quite a lot around that damage. But I'm assuming that this stuff will soak into the cracks. Glue everything together a bit. And where you've got little reflections and everything, it might very well stop those. This is another panel, different mate. I've already sprayed it with the lacquer, but if you can see, top corner impact, bottom corner impact. And it's a crater. Let's just go and have a look. Maybe you can see there's a big ding. So you can virtually guess that this set won't work. And if you look underneath, I don't know whether you can see that, there's a bend. And this is the other, this is the Trina Solar. Again, one, two, three, four connections for the three sets of wafers. So if anyone's wrong, with these Trina Solar it's even better because you can just connect down here. 250 watts maximum power point voltage 30.3 at 8.7 amps an open circuit voltage 38 volts. The sun's coming out from behind that cloud so let's give it a test. Now these ones, Trina Solar, really a lot better inside. A lot nicer. The, the, the covers came off very easily. There was no levering and hauling and stuff like that. And bigger diodes, it's, it's a lot nicer generally. That's not very much. Wait for that sun to come out. Right, this is the damaged, the damaged end. Not very much. Right, sun's coming out. Now there's no point measuring for voltage really, because the voltage can get through the smallest amount. So you can get voltage and no current whatsoever. That is two and a bit. Try it again, the sun's come out a bit more. Still two. Two and a little bit. Three. <clears throat> so perhaps there's more damage to this panel than meets the eye. Wait for that sun to get out a bit more. Three. Two. Less than two. Hopefully you can see this meter here. Less than two. Uh, one. So... There's a bit, bit more cloud getting across the, across the sun. Yeah, we're going to have to wait a minute. Let's just try this end one. Yes, it's definitely a lot lower. So you could just use, use these two 
So bring that terminal out there and that would be 20 volts. So you could use that for charging a 12 volt battery. Uh, we should be fine. Or you can add three of these panels together and uh, uh, do 48 or two of them and do 24. Let's, let's go across those two. Three amps. Yeah, well it would do but it's not brilliant. I think we'll uh, stop this here more later. So let's just do a flip through uh, my book. This is edition two. Anybody who's read edition one will know that there's a lot of research in the back. There's a whole research section on what you expect to get out of panels or uh, wind turbines. And it's a real study on real time. None of this manufacturer's figures or anything like that. We actually recorded the output weekly for between the shortest day in December until the following August. Uh, and that was for tracked panels and stationary panels and two sizes of turbine. So it was quite a lot. And there's all these, um, let's see, there's all these graphs. See if you can see that. What one's that one? That's uh, the future energy against the proven. Um, so there's loads of stuff in here. It's lots of practical, down to earth. This is what you get. This is what you can do. There's none of this. There's even generator theory there. There's none of this sort of spend a fortune and um, it'll all happen by itself. This is down to earth. There's even a drop tester there for batteries. Down to earth, using second hand batteries, lead acid uh, technology. See, that's, that's what a cell looks like inside. I actually took a cell apart just to get that. Battery banks. And of course, various ways of um, tracking solar. In here there's a circuit diagram for uh, charge controller and there's how to work out what your consumption was and your cable sizes for a given current distance and uh, and voltage. I can't find it at the minute. Let's have a look. You know, I looked at this yesterday because I was fiddling with stuff and I found it straight away. There we go. Homemade divert charge controller circuit. And there's the circuit diagram and uh, a description step by step how to make it and the bits and pieces you need for it. Uh, but I'm going to do some videos on this. I'm going to take the various little bits of the circuit and uh, explain them. But of course, being a slightly sensible, um, I'm going to keep the values of the, the various components and the numbers um, under me hat. So, but you'll still get a very cheap charge controller.